Hi folks, welcome. As you probably know, this isn't the first time I take products on Kickstarter, analyze them, understand which are the best part and the bad things I can improve. So a couple years ago, we've made this slider. It's an opposite gear slider. It's all made with, with recycled parts and it works like a real slider. You can place the camera on top and you can just record videos and it's so professional made holy metal in this way. We also made last year this, that was the orbital camera, was an amazing product on, on Kickstarter probably you already know it, and it was extremely expensive. So I tried to make it by myself, just recycling parts. I recycle an old bicycle and a drill, and it works amazing. So today's project is taking this. It is a stand for camera. It's from Elkodrome, and it looks really handy. It's so quickly to regulate and position the camera. You can lift it up, and there it stays. But there is a, a problem with this design. If you put too much weight on this stand, or if you extend it too much, you, you has exercised too much lever force, and the camera will fall on itself. And um, yeah, that's really bad, considering that it is so expensive. I'm talking about more than 500 bucks. So uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I can do it better, just spending 40 bucks. So let's get started, but first, intro. this project we need to think out of the box something that is so tricky and fun for my brain to do and the first thing i bought are these extremely cheap wrenches for only five bucks each i then fix everything inside the vise because now it's time to remove the plastic handle from it it was molded on top so it's so difficult to remove it but i can use a heat gun to soften the plastic and then i can wear a glove so i don't burn my skin and remove the plastic without problems so i repeat this procedure six times until all the wrenches are naked and ready to be used for the next step which is the most important one Something that confused every photographer or video maker is the height of the tripod where you have to mount the camera. Everything is based on the subject in front of the camera. For example, we have to take this measurement that is precisely the measurement of the nose of the subject. This will be the height of the tripod we have to build. In this case, the stand has a precise shape, a very different one, but the height of the camera is the same of the subject nose. So these are the measurements. I just bought almost 20 feet of this metal pipe. I take measurements as before, and now what I have to do is cut it precisely. Every pair has to have the perfect dimension so that the, the tripod will be so precise and sturdy. Now I have to take the branch of before and fit it inside the metal pipe. And this time I was so lucky, the parts fit perfectly. And it's really unbelievable. Now I just have to take a little hammer and push it carefully inside with, with some very, very soft strikes here on the top until the parts reach the end right here. And then we can maybe put a couple welds spot so that it doesn't move anymore. We repeat this process for all components and now I've just this. made a rendering into Fusion 360 so we can concentrate and focus on the base, which is the part we are going to build right now. So this has a little spacer here on the top and to do this, to make it, we need these fittings. You already know what I'm talking about. These are standard fittings. They mount without problems on top of the wrenches. We need a couple of them because we need to modify them. And to modify, I need to take a section of metal pipe so that the parts fit inside perfectly. Now is a very good idea to weld the parts so it doesn't move. And to do this, I can use the vise to apply some force so that everything is precisely mounted and weld it in place. So here it is. one shorter and two longer ones we can take the longer one and start to see the design into fusion 360 we need to make 
this component, you can understand we need to add a spacer. A spacer made with stainless steel, this is a bracket and I can weld it just precisely here straight and I can add then another little pipe, I cut a slot inside and I can push the parts together. With extreme force the parts goes together but it's also a great idea to add some spot welds so it doesn't move anymore. We can then test fit the movement inside the branches, make sure it doesn't touch and stop anywhere until it touch the bottom. So basically this is the movement, now I position the branches so they are free to move, but it's also a good idea to change position of these branches to stop the tripod once we are going to use it, because these branches can stop in one direction or in another direction every time you change position of this stopper. We can then use the welding table and hold the holes we have on it to align precisely all the parts so they are perfectly straight and parallel and add two other little pipes so that all the parts will be much stronger and stable. I can weld all the parts and everything is coming so great. I can use a hammer and this is really amazing. It, it's still something looks that came from the shop. Now it's time instead to think about the next step. And I'm talking about the blue component I've shown you into the rendering on Fusion 360. It's basically the same shape, so I will not bore you with all this process, but it's important to understand where we need to weld the other component. Do you remember the bracket we welded here on this component? We can weld the two parts here so they are perfectly aligned and very strong and stable. So this is coming great. Uh, let me remember you all the measurements, the distance of all the pipes you just made. So the next step is a, bit, a little bit different and because on this last part we need to mount the, this, it is a fluid head from a Manfrotto tripod. In this case we can take the shorter pipe we, ma we modified earlier and I 3D print this component that will be the bracket that we hold the fluid head of the tripod. We can fit it inside, but it's also a very good idea to glue the parts together so it doesn't spin and move anymore. And I will use some polyurethane glue to do this. So let the glue dry for about 24 hours. Don't use silicone, maybe you can use epoxy, but silicone doesn't stick at all to plastic. We continue all the procedure, so the wrenches go inside the tube, we weld the parts and we continue on and on until we have all the three parts perfectly aligned and you can hear and see that the tripod is working. You can hear the clicking sound of the wrenches and I can change position of each wrench and decide the height and the distance and the position of the camera so quickly. So I'm so proud on how everything is coming on. We need now to think about the base where to mount everything. I have this stepper, it's a gym equipment I don't use anymore and it's so heavy and stable. I can weld the parts here and maybe it's a good idea also later on to add some weight so it doesn't fall over. We can mount the fluid head here on top of the 3D printed part and paint everything in black. And we are ready, so it's coming great. Well folks, this is the best project ever I ever made 
for my shop. This is so handy. The base is so small, so I don't have any more. All the legs of the tripod was sticking all the way through my shop. And this is so compact. It's also very easy to fold it. You just have to regulate the wrench and you can lift it up or pull it down very easy. This is the best thing because in my shop, I have to change very frequently the, the camera angle because I have a very, very short table and I, I switch very frequently between overhead shot, uh, over the top shot, and very, very, <laughs> you understand what I mean. So this will solve all my problems. Something that probably I wouldn't buy in, uh, in the future if I want to replicate the project are the two wrenches here on the top are, aren't really necessary because you can definitely use the head of the tripod to regulate the angle of the camera. So basically you just need to buy four wrenches. These are extremely cheap. I bought them on, on a local shop for 20 bucks, six bucks each. Yeah, it was 26 baht into four, I don't know, something very cheap. Probably if you buy them online from China, it will be like something crazy free. So yeah, this is a very simple project, but solve all my problems. Consider that the original one we've seen on Kickstarter has a huge problem. If you put too much weight on the front, we, we, we exercise too much lever force and it will fold and the camera will fall down. This instead works with the opposite. The more weight we put here on the top, the more stable the tripod is. I'm, I'm, I'm very serious here because the, the head of the tripod is a very heavy one from Manfrotto and also the camera, I will use this 4K Sony camera is much heavier. You can really imagine that the more weight we put, we apply here, the more stress and the less vibration will form here on the tripod. Unfortunately, something broke up. You've seen it uh, earlier. I'm talking about the connection that I made with the 3D printed part and the metal part. I used polyurethane glue, which is the best glue for sure. Isn't that a problem? But something broke up. Uh, you can see now it's loose. Probably I didn't let the glue dry enough. I was in a hurry. Consider that I made all this project in about one, almost 24 hours. So it was pretty fast. Um, yeah, let me know here in the comments below if you want to see how to replicate yourself this project with a 3D printer. I can design and share with you all the files in the next video. So let me know. We will make a, the second version about this <laughs> tripod. So at this point, I leave you here my two previous projects. Check them out and see you next week here on the only tutorial YouTube channel. Ciao, ciao.